Author and journalist David Price Jones is someone I've admired for, well, for years, actually. His book, The Closed Circle, examined the reasons for the, for the backward state of the Arab world and one of the best accounts of the Middle East I have read. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, let's begin by, by, by talking about uh, foreign policy, geopolitics in the Middle East, because in my monologue, I, I mentioned Turkey and Turkish foreign policy. Turkey is a, a major player, but it wants to be the major player in the region. Uh, I find that quite worrying and disturbing. Am I, am I right to be concerned? Well, they have a new policy, don't they, called Neo-Ottomanism, which harks back to the days when the Turks ruled the Arabs. And I think they see an opportunity, Erdogan sees an opportunity here to take over the prime role in the Middle East. And in order to do that, uh, to make himself popular, he becomes anti-Israeli and anti-Semitic. So he's whipping up a lot of sentiment in the Middle East, which is extremely dangerous. Mm. There, there was a time when Israel... Turkish, for, Turkish foreign policy has changed. Yes, I mean, Israel could count Turkish allies in, 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 in Iran and Turkey and, and Egypt to a certain extent. And, and, and Israel now seems to be, if it goes on like this, it'll have no friends at all in the region. It'll be very isolated. It will be very isolated. And that is what, one of the things that Erdogan is doing. He's threatening, I see, the, in, the, in the latest news, is he's thre threatening to send Turkish warships to the Eastern Mediterranean. Mm. So that, that would be um, a, a, a very great threat indeed. And he's also saying that if Israel um, tries to develop the natural gas fields that it's found in its own waters, um, Turkey would stop it. So this, this, is, this is war, isn't it? These are threats of war. Is, is he playing a game or does he really mean that? Well, this is impossible to know, isn't it? I mean, one of the things that's so difficult with, with, with this part of the world is their shame and honor calculus. That th he felt, I think, that Turkey had been shamed by that Gaza flotilla story when nine Turks were killed by Israeli commanders and the Israelis refused to apologize. So Turkey's shame. So then you have to recover that. You have to get back honor. And th then you say things and do things that are irrational. Um, and this is what's happening now. What we can't know outside the loop, as we are, is whether he really means it or not. Does Ahmadinejad really mean to wipe out Israel with a nuclear weapon? We don't know. I mean, is that posturing? Is it to do with shame and honor? We, there's absolutely no way we can get inside the minds of those people. Mm. I Iran, of course, Ahmadinejad, we, we assume a certain, uh, well, irrational approach. And, not sophisticated leadership. Turkey is different. We have in the Turkish leader a man who, who is not a fool and for years actually ha has appeared to be far more moderate than he does now. Well, I think that he's been um, pushed towards this Islamism by several factors. Um, one is the response of the, of the um, uh, European Union. Another is the Kurdish um, guerrillas that he's fighting and which uh, the European Union doesn't like. So in order to get his own back on the European Union, to show he's a big man in his own right, he's throwing his weight around and he's taking an Islamist view. Now, he is, in fact, I think, a sincere Muslim, and why not? Um, but if you are believing in some of the Muslim doctrines and so on, then you probably do think that the Jews have it coming to them and they deserve whatever trouble um, they've brought upon themselves. And that's what he's doing. Mm. Let's go outside of, of uh, the heartland of Islam to the Islamic diaspora. In Europe, it's one thing for there to be problems in the Middle East, but we have uh, growing Islamic populations throughout Europe. And although many are assimilating or, or, or merely becoming part of the, the, the greater culture, which is fine, there's a, there's a hardcore minority, but a large number of people who support the extremists in the Middle East, and they have, they have the same views. This is a fifth column, effectively, isn't it? Well, I, I'm afraid it probably is. I mean, one, one would wish it to be otherwise. I, I mean, if they don't assimilate, um, then we are in the whole of Europe is in very great trouble indeed. There are a certain number, only a restricted number, thank God, of, of, of imams and extremists and um, Hizbut Tahrir and people of that sort who actually believe that there should be a confrontation and that they will one day, through, through Islam and through violence, um, rule the continent. Um, something dreadful will happen if that is the case, and I don't believe it will be the case. I think, in fact, that um, 
Western consumerism is stronger than anything that Islam can throw up against it. And therefore, in the end, they will assimilate on our terms. Um, w w th that's what has to happen. We have to meet on equal terms. If, if they are superior to us or we are superior to them, it can only lead to violence and um, horror. Mm. It's a very interesting analysis. I do hope you're right. David Price-Jones, thank you so very much indeed. Thank you.